Now that the Pope has encouraged Congress to find common ground, they have less than a week to pass a funding bill in order to avoid a government shutdown. Today, the Senate blocked a temporary funding bill that would have cut federal funds to Planned Parenthood. The motion needed 60 votes to advance. The final tally was 47 to 52. Eight Republicans, including presidential candidate Rand Paul, voted with the Democrats. On Monday, the Senate will hold another procedural vote, this time on a clean resolution that would not defund Planned Parenthood. If that passes, the Senate would hold its final vote on Tuesday, leaving the House one full day to pass a budget bill of its own before the shutdown deadline. Leading the charge for a government shutdown is once again presidential candidate Ted Cruz, who wrote this about Republican leadership's promise not to shut down the government. On its face, the promise sounds reasonable, except in practice it means that Republicans never stand for anything. In an op-ed for the Wall Street Journal today, Karl Rove writes, a few presidential hopefuls seem to want to shut down a shutdown to burnish their credentials with primary voters, but they cannot explain how they will get the votes to pass the defunding measure or overcome a presidential veto. Without such a plan, this is simply self-promotion. Any Republicans who engineer a shutdown will be unwitting allies of the abortion movement. Joining us now, Liz Mayer, a Republican strategist who has worked for Rick Perry, Scott Walker, Carly Fiorina, and Rand Paul. Also with us, Washington Post columnist Dana Milbank. Uh, Liz, Fair, Liz Mayer, you know these guys. Um, is, is Karl Rove's argument going to carry the day? Probably, yes. I think generally my view is that you can reliably bank on Republican leaders more or less running things right up to the wire and then doing pretty much whatever it takes to cave and sort of move the ball over the line in like even the last 30 minutes of the day. Um, I'm not sure that I wholly agree with him, though. Uh, well, I think that there probably is quite a lot of posturing going on here uh, by Ted Cruz, and often there is. I do think that there is a valid criticism here that Republicans frequently talk a good game about cutting spending in an array of areas, and whenever push comes to shove, we basically just prove that we're willing to spend just a small bit less than Democrats. And I do think that that is a problem with a lot of base voters in the Republican Party, particularly people who are of a more uh, limited government and libertarian mindset, much like myself, and a lot of people who are probably inclined to support people like Ted Cruz and Rand Paul in a presidential contest. Dana Milbank, you predicted that this uh, collection of presidential candidates on the Senate floor was bound to create situations like this. Uh, well, sure. I mean, uh, uh, it, it's, it's an absolute recipe for chaos. I don't think that, uh, well, this is going to cause headaches for uh, Mitch McConnell and then eventually uh, for John Boehner. I agree with Liz. I don't, uh, I don't think they're actually going to uh, be uh, zany enough to actually uh, shut down the government over this. And, you know, this is a point. They will run it to the last moment. There's always the risk that uh, something goes wrong. But uh, uh, th this is the time when they will uh, actually uh, uh, go against the uh, uh, conservative rank and file. It's particularly dangerous when it gets to John McCain, or, uh, John, John Boehner in the House, uh, uh, because he is in a, a much more vulnerable position in terms of his leadership. There's already sort of this no confidence uh, vote floating out there. Uh, but when push comes to shove, uh, uh, they will uh, not allow uh, this to go through because they've learned their lesson repeatedly before following uh, Ted Cruz off the edge of a cliff. Liz Mayer, what was Rand Paul's calculation to? Today in joining the Democrats voting with them? Um, well, Rand Paul also put out a statement, uh, I believe it was after that, that made the point that I don't think he intends to support the measure that they're going to next try that will include this funding. And I think his criticism is probably very similar to what mine would be. Um, even if you go ahead and do what we're now contemplating doing, we're still adding, I think his calculation is something in the realm of $400 billion uh, to, I believe he's saying debt as opposed to deficit. Now, they, that may not sound like a phenomenal amount when we're talking about $18, $19 trillion in debt, but that is still objectionable and doubling down on the problem. And so I don't think when you look at Rand Paul's voting, it's not necessarily fair to say he's voting like a Democrat or with Democrats. I think he, he generally is 
voting against uh, increased spending generally, regardless of whether that includes Planned Parenthood or not. I think he has a problem with a wide array of government spending and probably, uh, much like many more libertarian-inclined Republicans, feels that there's quite a lot of spending beyond simply that going to Planned Parenthood that is objectionable. And if we're going to have a discussion about shutting the government down, gosh, we ought to get rid of quite a bit of the rest of it and not just the Planned Parenthood stuff. Uh, Dana Milbeck, uh, quickly before we go, uh, a week from now, what happens? Um, we, we will have punted the whole thing into December, and then we get to do the entire thing all over again, Lawrence, with, in, with exactly the same cast of characters. A very familiar outcome. Liz Mayer and Dana Milbeck, thank you both for joining us tonight.